Welcome back to another episode, guys. This is the show where we learn a little and eat a lot. I hope you packed your taste buds. This time we're going to... Ethiopia! Ethiopia! Known for their coffee, amazing food. They're home to some of the oldest specimens of modern day human. Ethiopia is jam packed with wonders. If you checked out our last video, we revealed this episode's country. And we tried some delicious meat and veggie dishes, like the mesen wat, which we will be attempting to make today, as well as a beef dish packed with flavor and fried to perfection. Blended family, put your forks and knives together for this Ethiopian dish directives. I'm so excited. make this dish as flavorful as possible is make a clarified seasoned butter called niter kibbe. Now this butter is simmered with spices like bezobella, which is a sacred basil, like kesaret, it's a dried herb similar to oregano, fenugreek, cumin, turmeric, and then Ethiopian cardamom, kororim. Reflective of its food, Ethiopia shares its borders with six other African countries. Eritrea to the north, Sudan to the west, South Sudan to the southwest, Kenya to the south, Somalia to the east, and Djibouti rests just northeast of Ethiopia. Ethiopia is the world's most populous landlocked sovereign state and is neatly nestled in the Horn of Africa. The country is divided by the Great Rift Valley, creating colder dry climates in the west and lush green hotter climates in the east. This valley has been a rich source of fossils that allow for the study of human evolution, especially in an area known as Piedmont. Because of the rapidly eroding highlands, the valley has been filled with sediments and a very favorable environment for the preservation of remains to be discovered by future archaeologists. Lake Tana located in the Amara region of the northwestern Ethiopian highlands, is the largest lake in Ethiopia and is a natural source of water that fuels the Blue Nile. Now the Blue Nile connects to the White Nile and together they form the mouth of the Blue Nile Falls. Now I can keep listing on facts about Ethiopia, but this Niterkebe smells way too good. All right guys, so our butter has been simmering for 90 minutes. All of the spices have blended together nicely. The house smells amazing. I so, can smell it from down the hall. It's amazing. So, so we are gonna strain it so that all those beautiful herbs don't end up in our butter. And uh, we're gonna put it in a mason jar that we can seal and then we're gonna set it to cool. On to the next dish. All right guys, the butter has set nicely and so I think it's time to get ready and start our vegetarian side, the misenwat. Oh my gosh, let's be real guys. I think, and personally I think, that the best vegetarian sides come from India and Ethiopia and it's no joke and this red lentil stew does not disappoint. Due to lentils being so plentiful in Ethiopia, misenwat is a staple dish in the Ethiopian diet. You'll often find it included on the menu at Ethiopian restaurants as a part of a vegetarian dish combo platter called Yetsam Beyanatu. Check out our previous after hours to see us try more of these delicious delights. Along with these red lentils, bearberry seasoning is added to give it its signature red color. Bearberry seasoning is the masala of Ethiopian cooking and it's a mixture of different spices that form the backbone of flavor for many of their dishes. Now, it's definitely an essential for cooking in Ethiopian food, and I can't wait to try some of the meserwat that we're going to make this evening. Oh my god, me too. Guys, I love food, but the only thing I love more are hyenas. We are going to start with our onions, we're going to get them nice and caramelized in our stock pot, and uh, we are going to use the knitted kibbe that we made to make that happen. Interestingly enough, Ethiopia has a large population of spotted hyenas. During the 1960s in the walled city of Harar, the oldest Islamic city in Africa, a farmer started feeding the hyenas in hopes of halting their attacks on his livestock. This practice continued through generations with great success. Now the hyenas of Harar sanitize the city by feeding on its organic waste. Beyond that, 
Ethiopia's animal kingdom includes gazelles, cheetahs, antelopes, baboons, and the famous Abyssinian lion. The Addis Ababa Zoo is home to some of the last of this genetically distinct subspecies of lion. Generally smaller and stockier than other lions, the male Abyssinian lion's mane grows down under their torso and along its belly. These lions are descendants of the late great King Haile Selassie's private collection. Mufasa, Mufasa, Mufasa. <laughs> Hashtag Lion King. Our misarwat is done and it smells amazing. I can just hear the injera calling me to eat it. Despite Ethiopia being known as a vegetarian hub, meat lovers, please do not despair. There are definitely some options out there. Derek Tibbs is a fried medley of meat and vegetables. Oh, it smells amazing and I cannot wait to try it. Oftentimes when you are walking through Ethiopia, you'll be able to see butcher shops where you can walk in and get lean cuts of beef cut right there in front of you and prepared in different variations. Oh my god, I'm starving. The Misenwat is ready. Let's get this beef on the road. Ethiopia is home to many beautiful sites like the astonishing Lalibela. Comprised of 11 medieval churches carved out of rock, these architectural beauties were constructed in the 12th century under the orders of King Lalibela. Now he went on to name this impressive collection of creatively crafted churches New Jerusalem. In addition, it's said that the historical cathedral St. Mary of Zion, aka the Chapel of the Tablet, is home to the true Ark of the Covenant, said to contain the Ten Commandments. Probing deeper, I'm talking 410 feet below sea level deeper, the Danakil Depression in the Afar is the country's lowest and hottest sight to behold, situated above three tectonic plates and averaging above 34 to 50 degrees Celsius, which is 94 to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. The absence of rain results in the Awash River drying up, leaving a trail of salt lakes such as the famous Lake Afrera. The depression also hosts several volcanoes and crater lakes, such as Mount Ayula and Erta Ali. All right, our Derek Tib is now simmering. It's gonna go for another 40 minutes to get all those flavors combined from the butter to the veggies. Ah, it's gonna be crazy, I can't wait. We need to make even more flavor for this dish by adding a dipping sauce. Oh my god, berberi, berberi, berberi. Okay, so that's the first part of this, okay? Berberi, like we said, is a combination of different uh, seasonings. Each family has their own version of this, but it's usually a, a similar variation of flavors. So this red seasoning is gonna be going into what's called an awaze sauce that we are about to make. So it starts with berberi, and then if Ethiopia couldn't get cool enough, They've got their own honey wine. And guys, we couldn't find it here in Canada, but we did our research and it showed that honey wine is just pretty much, pretty much white wine and honey mixed together. But Ethiopia has this beautiful, 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 beautiful history of having medicinal herbs in their food. It just looks like they're taking care of their souls, their minds, and their bodies all the time. So they have got this herb, that the special herb that they put in their wines called Gersh, if I'm not mistaken. And obviously we couldn't source it here. We, we traveled and trekked and tried to find a restaurant that would give it to us, but alas, they said no. So we have to go with alternatives. So we have honey wine in the house today. Big ups, it's from Quebec. <laughs> so we are gonna be mixing our honey wine and our berberi seasoning to make an awaze sauce. So guys, Ethiopia. It has been a labor of love, but that's what it takes to season and make such a delight. The whole time that we have been cooking, the house has been filled with the best scents and our stomachs have been growling because we've just been like, when are we gonna eat? It is so beautiful to the eyes and it smells amazing. Thank you, Ethiopia, for Derek Tibbs and Miss Arwan. Let's eat. Yeah. Ooh, Ethiopia, oh my goodness, babe. We had such a blast. <laughs>
honestly, it's been an excellent experience from the beginning to this very moment. We've been this waiting. One We've literally been waiting for this. It smells amazing. The house has been like wafting in these scents all day. It took so much time to do this between the knitted kibbe, the misarwat, and the skin, but it's all worth it. I cannot make that clear enough. If you want flavor in your food, you gotta put in the time. You have to, you just do. We studied and learned so much. The culture is so rich. Let's eat, baby. Miss and what, let us try that first. It is red bean lentil stew, and it had been cooking for 40 minutes. Here you go. Thank you. Dee -dee -dee -dee. So you got from your side. Perfect. And maybe even Nico will give me a gersha. Mm, how about a little gersha, darling? A little gersha? Mm. Mm. Mm, mm. Mm, 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 mm. I think it's better because it's homemade. Oh my god. Mm. It's so good. Mm. That was really good. Wow, that was delicious. I'm gonna take another bite. Super, super flavored. Flavorful. Hey, do you oh. think it's a sin if I dip uh, some of this into the awaze? You gotta try it. Awaze sauce, going for the dip. Tell me what you think. It is definitely spicy, but that's because of the berberi seasoning. And it's just velvety. It feels smooth, but you still get some textures from the lentils. All those onions and garlics, oh, it's just singing in my mouth. That nitar kibbe really does it. I finally understand why it doesn't take like Ethiopian restaurants so long to cook this because they've already done the long laborious process of infusing their butters. And that is a killer win in terms of cooking. To be able to get this flavor in 40 minutes. Honestly, the food really speaks for itself. For that much work to be done in advance to prepare a meal like this, it speaks volumes inside your mouth. Mm, it's Amazing. definitely something to try. Their vegetarian combo is no joke. Check out After Hours for us trying all of the variations they were to die for. So let's jump in to the tips because I have been waiting all day for this. Dedic tips, let's go. Grab a piece, baby. So also on the plate, we've got a chili blend called Meat Mita. It is gorgeous and beautiful and orange. It has bird's eye chili in it. Is it safe to say that this meat mita is like a dry sauce? It's like a dry dip for your meat and it's actually a flavor boost that you didn't know that you needed in your life. It's, it's gorgeous. Let's try it. <laughs> mm, the beef is so good. So good. I'm gonna dip my Ooh. remaining piece into the awaze, hmm. which is honey and berberi seasoning. So we're just all up in these seasonings. We are feeling good every bite. I love that. That is out of this world. Mm. So flavorful. <laughs> Such a crazy combo. Oh my God. <laughs> the awaze sauce is that brightening agent to all of this. Oh my God. It just speaks. It yeah. just like sings. It's acidic, but sweet. Oh my God. So and good. heavily spiced. I love it. If you love seasoning, this is the place to go. Honestly, check out your local Ethiopian restaurants because they are the hidden gem. You won't regret it. You I really promise. won't. Oh my god. And definitely go in a group because they serve it on a plate that is in Jeddah, which you can actually eat. Guys, come on. There's nothing bad about this, okay? Utensils that you can eat. So Who doesn't need utensils you can eat, right? Mm -hmm. From the injera to the misarwat to the detectives, it has been an absolute delight trying to make Ethiopian fare. We hope we even measured up. We tried to source the best recipes we could find online. And honestly, I think we took a small trip to Ethiopia. Yep. I feel like I've been there, at least in my heart. At least in my heart. And we cannot wait to visit once uh, climates change and COVID settles down. That's one more country on our list that we are dying to go to. I love it. Nico, it's time to devour this, so that means you guys gotta go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, let us know what country we should go to next, or if you have any facts on Ethiopia that you would like to drop like it's hot, let us know in the comments down below. Make sure to check out After Hours where we always reveal the next country we will be showing as well as a little bit of extra facts that didn't make it into this video. And wait till next week when we go to another country. We're so excited! Ethiopia, we want to thank you for your wonderful facts and your delicious snacks. Blended MTL, we're, we're out. out.
Mesawat, booty what? Mesawat, booty what? Sir. Woo-hoo! <laughs>